snow cover could soon go from this to this. What's going on guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we are going to talk about the winter pattern across the lower 48 finally coming to life, although it looks that way anyway. We're going to first track a couple of storms, and then we're going to break down the overall long-range pattern on why we could see more of these come rolling through as we get deeper into January. It's something we highlighted way back in December, that, that mid-January time frame would be the time. If you like to stay update on all things weather, especially as we are rolling through the winter, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you happen to find this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help us out a lot, and it's a really easy task. All right, so storm one. This weekend, Saturday into Sunday, likely going to be rolling up the mid-Atlantic and then potentially into the northeast. Well, the storm is going to be there in the northeast. The question, though, is where does the snow fall? We're going to break all that down for you in just one second. Storm 2 comes early next week, Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday in the Great Lakes region, really coming up through the plains, through the Great Lakes Potentially there. The same question, where does the snow fall? The storm, though, is likely. And then again, we're going to break down that long-range pattern as we get deeper into this video, closer to the end of the video. I'll have the chapters broken down. Uh, you can search for the time codes right there in the description. All right, so here's the current snow cover. Puny. At best, there's hardly any snow, most as expected in our white Christmas forecast. We told you the early, in early December that we would likely not have a widespread white Christmas. That's exactly what happened, unfortunately. And there we go. There's our current snow cover. We have a little bit of snow in parts of the Dakotas, northern Minnesota, the mountains of West Virginia. Of course, the Rockies, we have snow, Sierra Nevadas, and then into the Cascades and the higher elevations. That's where we have the snow. Watch what happens. This is the snow cover forecast now going out to the next 10 days. And you see the change here. All the different colors popping back up on the map that I just showed you here is a number of different systems that could put down some snow. The main question that we've really been fighting, not only this year, but for the years past, is will there be enough cold air? And it does look like in spots there will be. So we are going to break all that down first and foremost. All right. We're going to first start with the European model, look at the long range scale here, the, I should say the widespread scale here. We're going to break down a couple of different weather features. We have first and foremost, that big area of high pressure chilling out over the nation's midsection. That's going to help keep some cold air in place. Now here comes storm system number one developing. We're going to have to watch this across the North Gulf Coast as well for the potential for some severe weather. That includes Florida. Quick zoom right back in. Here's where we first start to find some wintry precip with this main system coming out of the south here. This is going to be early Saturday mornings for watching this for the Roanoke Valley into the New River Valley and then also the higher elevations here of the Smokies into the mountainous regions of uh, North Carolina as well through the Blue Ridge Mountains and then watch what happens. There's some cold air here. There's not a ton to keep this all snow it looks like for especially the New River Valley, the Roanoke Valley, but the highlands here and then to the west of D.C., we could get a decent snowstorm out of this. We're going to have much more on numbers coming up over the next couple of days. But right now, I just want to show you here this overall pattern, what's going through. The darker blue, again, represents the snow. And then look at this. The European wants to kick out the low in a nice, favorable spot for the northeast. When is the last time we said that? It has been a while. My friends in the Northeast, I know that we've been itching for a good snowstorm. I'm not saying this one is it just yet, but certainly I like what I see right here with an area of low pressure. We do have some cold air. Let me zoom this back up. We have our high pressure right here. Forecast the high, forecast the snow, because that is what supplies the colder air with the advancing warm air from the south you need to have that cold air in place so again that's something that we're going to be watching this is going to be sunday morning so the big cities like philadelphia new york even long island again you need a lot of cold air to get that moisture to turn to snow on long island boston we're going to be under the gun for that as well a lot of the northeast could get some decent snow out of the deal here if the track like this holds so it's something that we're going to be monitoring and then again this thing kind of blows up as it works its way off the canadian maritimes let me move my uh big area of low pressure let me just delete that and that is that works its way up towards uh, newfoundland the canadian maritimes new brunswick we could get some snow out of this dew it has certainly been a while for us so there is storm number one now storm two we're going to focus on the interior big system kind of blows up rolls its way out of the rockies and then slides up through the plains and then into the great lakes a couple of things here detroit i know my friends in detroit we've been waiting for a very good snowstorm it has also been a while right here we have the pink that is the rain snow line that is not a good scenario for us in the european dis uh, distinction here depiction 
I'm going to show you the GFS, though. That paints a different story that we're going to have to watch for. But nonetheless, right here, that closed isobar, that's where that area of low pressure sits. We have the warm front right here. Again, all that warmer air kind of advancing to the north. You need the cold air to counteract that. The best spot you want to be, we always talk about this, is north and west of the low, displaced by about 100 to 200 miles. That's where the best snow falls. So right now, Des Moines, Dubuque, Rochester, Minnesota, Green Bay, maybe getting close to Chicago as well. Uh, there's another saying too, uh, you have to smell the rain to get the good snow. So if you're close to that rain snow line, if you're on just on the, the snow side, that's where you get some really, really good snow. So one of the things we're watching here for that. Now we're going to take this further out and that's going to live up into the Great Lakes there. So a couple of things to watch. Again, the storm is likely, the details are still a little hazy. Here's what happens on the GFS, a very similar setup here that kind of rolls right on through. It has that wintry mix through the Roanoke Valley. Again, we're watching that for you guys for a potentially dicey morning through Southwest Virginia and through the rest of the Mid-Atlantic on Saturday. Here's the deal. Low a little bit further away, uh, the GFS wants to hang on to that rain snow line uh, on Long Island and to New York. This is certainly not – it's less snow in the GFS representation. But if you're rooting for snow anyway, you at least like to see the GFS and the European at this stage of the game. What is it, Wednesday? Kind of hinting that we're going to have an area of low pressure rolling off the coast. Still need to have a couple of things come together kind of similar solution then it gets pushed back out uh to see all right also similar we have another big developing system rolling out of the desert southwest and out of the southern plains here's tuesday at four o'clock and you see the difference here the low is going to try to let me delete my other low this low is gone all right, so let me bring up my big red L here as we do the live telestration here in real time. There's, lo there's the low, but Detroit, we get in on some of the snow now, also sh through Chicago. So this would be a favorable, we would quickly change things over to rain if the low track continued in this direction, by the way. So if this cuts right on through Detroit, that's a bad area. But hey, at least we get something out of the deal. This is a really good setup for heavy snow uh, around St. Louis, through central Illinois, to the Chicago area. So if you're rooting for snow in Chicago, this is what you want to continue to see hold here. You are rooting for the GFS representation, and you want it to hold again. This is still about six days out. There's going to be a lot of windshield wiper effect where the low wants to go further to the west and then back to the east. A lot still needs to come into play. But the one thing I can say for certain is that we are going to have an impactful storm in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast this weekend. And we're likely going to have an impactful storm somewhere in the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, early next week. The details we are going to iron out right here. So keep it right here on this channel. We're going to talk about numbers and everything as we get deeper. All right. So those are those first two storms. Again, this is the most wintry the pattern has looked for the United States in quite some time. We're going to talk a little bit about why that is uh, in just a second. Here is the overall outlook from the Climate Prediction Center over the next 8 to 14 days. Now, this is going to go out through the middle of January here, through about the 17th or 18th. Uh, you clearly see where the cold air is going to be favored, right through here, the western two-thirds of the United States. Still some warmth, though, hanging on into the northeast and then certainly central and south Florida. Uh, through the middle of January. The reason for that is we have this big dip in the jet stream expected to develop as we kind of roll into the middle of January. And that's, again, where the Climate Prediction Center forecasting out through. I want to show you a couple of different features here. And this is the main reason why. Uh, we see one little lobe here. If you follow my mouse, all that cold air, those, what I'm showing you here are the height anomalies. The lower the heights, the colder the air associated with those heights. So you see that right there, that's one system. And then look at this big behemoth kind of upper low, kind of track right on down the Cascades and then head towards the Four Corners region. A couple of things that we're going to be watching with this is, of course, we have this big dip in the jet stream in the west. We have high height anomalies over Alaska. Typically, that's one of the things that we are going to be looking for for a lot of cold in the lower 48 of the United States is a big ridge of high pressure to develop out over Alaska. If you want snow in the northeast, you would want to see this kind of displaced closer to Vancouver in the western U.S. 
We're going to talk more on that in just one second. The other favorable thing for cold in the lower 48 is look at this big purple blob at the top of your screen, right where it says 1981 to 2010 climatology. That is a huge block over Greenland. That is the probably the number one most thing that we look for when we try to get excited about a winter pattern is do we have blocking over Greenland? Because you, number one, you need to get the cold air in the United States. And number two, you need to keep it here and you need to keep storms kind of tied to the coast rather than sliding out. And you can thank the Greenland block for that. So that is one of the one thing that's really the main thing we look for uh, when we're talking about winter weather. Now, with this setup, though, it would favor when you have the dip in the jet stream right here, like where my mouse is circling, this would favor snowstorms to go inland. So it's not the best right now beyond this system that we just talked about for the weekend for snow in the northeast we have the blocking we have the cold but do we have the right pattern and that's the question and we'd want to see this ridge kind of displaced just a little I guess it's that way uh closer to vancouver closer to the west coast of the united states a couple of things here you've uh, heard us talk about this before certainly if you're a weather nerd you know what this is this is the ao the arctic oscillation this is one of the main things that we look at again for getting cold air supplied to the lower 48 when the arctic oscillation is positive we have a strong jet stream which keeps all the cold bottled up in canada that is no go for winter weather in the united states on a widespread scale at least fun happy big winter weather uh um, before we get further into the other oscillations that I want to show you, I just want to kind of break down what that is visually here. So again, that positive phase of the Arctic Oscillation, it keeps that cold air tightly packed into Canada, maybe sneaking into the northern United States. We like, if you like stormy weather, winter weather, cold weather, you like the Arctic Oscillation to be negative. What happens here is, is that the polar jet stream weakens, and it's counterintuitive kind of, but when the polar jet stream is weaker, it's more susceptible to being bullied, and it becomes wavy. Rather than a strong ribbon, it becomes wavy like what you see on your screen. That allows warm air to flow up from the south and then cold air to plunge down from the north. You get the difference in temperatures to increase that likely oftentimes gives us those big big storms whether it be in the upper midwest or northeast and then you get a lot of cold to follow so you want that arctic oscillation to be negative now the other thing here this relates to that blocking that we were just talking about this is the north atlantic oscillation so we talk a lot about el nino la nina being kind of the main parent force here the main oscillation that we look for for long-range forecasting that is true but on a more small scale, a couple weeks to a month out, these oscillations come into play big time and can kind of dictate uh, the short long range pattern, if that makes sense. Again, on the order of weeks rather than a whole season. So you see it here. Let me bring my mouse over to the other screen. Um, what we have going on here is the North Atlantic Oscillation plunging negative over the next several days. Now, what this means is that a lot of times there's also, it's like kind of squirrel, jump around. It takes a couple of weeks for the ramifications of what is occurring here to actually take place in the weather pattern. So we saw that giant blocking over Greenland right there, that big purple blob over Greenland. That's at the middle of January. Well, the crash happens kind of over the next couple of days and then bottoms out here. So that would make a ton of sense. So that is one of the things that we get more forecast confidence in whenever the model is doing something that kind of an oscillation forecast is predicting that gives us confidence that, okay, we are going to have block in there in a couple of weeks. And that is going to promote winter weather to continue through the second and third week of January. So there you go. Negative North Atlantic oscillation. Now, this is kind of the caveat here for my friends in the Northeast. The other component here, we love to get the AO negative. We love to get the North Atlantic Oscillation negative as well. But we want to have the PNA, the Pacific North American, positive. 
and you see it there for the most part, it is negative. Now, what this is going to do is that's going to promote troughing out west, which would give the colder air to the western United States, which would give that dip in the jet stream to the western United States. And then here it is on the visual model representation, the height anomalies. Once again, you see it right there. There is that big bullseye. And what typically happens when you have... I lived in Minnesota for many, many years. When you get this dip in the jet stream kind of rolling, this upper low rolling down the California closer, coaster over the four corners, this is where you get really excited for a big snowstorm uh, into the upper Midwest, into the Great Lakes. So that would be something we watch. I'm not saying it's impossible for us in the Northeast. It's just we have two out of three. I know Billy Joel said two out of three ain't bad, but in this case – we need to have the trifecta to get a really good snowstorm in the Northeast. Again, we're watching this weekend. We could get something pretty nice. Uh, still some things to iron out, but we are watching it. At least, I'm telling you, there's a chance. It has been a long time in the Northeast since we've had a good one, and we are crossing our fingers for you guys uh, that we get a good one in the Northeast. All right. We rambled on for a long time. I hope somewhere in there you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on these pair of likely winter storms hit that subscribe button for me and if you want to stay updated for the rest of winter as we go into the spring severe weather season and of course as we get ready to roll into hurricane season which i do not want to think about at this present time <laughs> hit that subscribe button for me and we will catch you next time